Hello everyone, I'm Rue Coldfire. Welcome to my new review show where I give my opinion about things that I either read, watch, listen to, or play. Usually suggestions by you guys or shit that I randomly find. Today we'll be going over a book that I recently read, but first let me start off by introducing the show. What the fuck did I just read? Well, let's see. What did I just read? I just read The Glass Books of the Dream Eaters, a novel by Gordon Dahlquist. So her story begins with a Miss Celeste Temple getting a breakup note from her fiancé, Roger Bascom, basically telling her to fuck off and never talk to him again. The old equivalent to a breakup over text. Total douche move. So after crying about this for a little while, she decides she's going to find out what went wrong. So she's going to stalk the guy. She manages to sneak onto some strange train in the middle of the night and ends up at a party where everyone's wearing masks. While she's there, of course, this whole thing is a bad idea, my dad. I didn't think I need to mention that. But anyways, at the party, she sees something she's not supposed to see. Not going to go into details because I'm not going to spoil for anyone who might have any interest in reading this after I'm done. So basically, she gets caught. And then after giving a false name, shoved into a carriage with two guys. And basically, you can tell they're going to kill her. They're, they're just going to fucking kill her. So while she's on her way out. One of the guys decides, I'm going to bang this chick. So, in the process of fighting off this guy who's trying to rape her, she stabs him in the neck with a fucking pencil, killing him. Whoops. Shit happens. So, then his friend, who's driving the carriage, is all of a sudden like, hey, you killed my friend. So, due to an accident, um, he gets run over by the carriage. Congratulations, you tried to stalk your ex-boyfriend, and now you killed two people. Good job. About how my night would go. So this proceeds to tell the story through three different points of view. Miss Temple and our next guy, who's named Cardinal Chang. This is not his real name. He is called Cardinal Chang because he wears a really bright red jacket. And he has a scar going across his eyes, which damaged them due to, I guess it was a horse whip, they said. It makes his eyes look squinty like an Asian. So, of course, racial joke. And he has poor eyesight and is very affected by light. So that's why he wears these really thick sunglasses like all the time. So Cardinal Chang is a professional hitman. He was hired to go to the same party she'd just been at to kill some dude named Arthur Trapping. But when he got there, dude was already dead. Don't know who did it. Interesting. So Cardinal Chang finds himself being hired by this mysterious woman who actually happens to be the one who caught Miss Temple at the party, you know, being where she wasn't supposed to be. So the death of Arthur Trapping is pinned on Miss Temple, who actually they believed was a whore in disguise. You know, one of those ones they come in, seduce you and then murder you. Um, so she believes that she was either a hired assassin or a whore working for someone in independently. So that's what she sends Chang out to look for. So he inquires at three different brothels. The first two, there's actually two other people who've already made inquiries about the same girl. A woman claiming to be her sister and a soldier dressed in black. Now at the third brothel, only the soldier dressed in black has inquired. This is believed to be because the woman who's claiming to be her sister is actually a former whore from that brothel. Now, we're going to move forward here and talk about the next character, Dr. Svensson. Dr. Avalard Svensson has actually been put in charge of keeping an eye on Prince Karl Horst von Marsmark. Um, the party that we mentioned earlier was actually an engagement party for the prince to Lydia van Deriff. Apparently this prince, at 23 years old, is a complete fuck-up. So... Everything possible that you think a prince could do that would be bad, he's probably done it. So, this prince goes missing multiple times. And it's Svensson's job to find the dumbass. Now, due to some events, the dear doctor happens to find himself in a situation where two bodies, one of them being the body of Arthur Trapping are being put into iron coffins and sunk in the river for no one to ever find ever again. Now, because they only have two coffins, they're trying to decide, how do we want to kill this guy? So, thankfully, Sensen manages to somehow get away. 
Now, in his attempt to escape, he happens upon a hotel where he looks in the window and sees Miss Temple, and he recognizes her. Now, the interesting thing about where he recognized her was he happened to come across in the jacket of Arthur Trapping two cards made of blue glass. And when you stare into the cards, you see a vision. It's a memory, someone's memory. And one of them, she was in, I think it was the background. So he tells her his tale. She decides, all right, well, let's go upstairs and we will talk in private and I will tell you my tale. So they go upstairs. I think it was like room 27 they were going to go into. And just as they're about to open the door, down the hall at room like 34 comes Cardinal Chang. So they have themselves a little conversation inside where all three of them tell their stories. Now it's funny because these people are after each of them. And they seem to think that they're all working for some higher person or something. When really it's just a bunch of idiots due to random coincidences totally fucking up their plans. So, at one point you actually hear Cardinal Chang telling about this guy who had, like the cards, a whole book made of glass. Thus we have the title, The Glass Books of the dream eaters now if these are memories i'm assuming that's what the dream eaters part means all right fast forwarding quite a few chapters they split up basically actually what happens is miss temple decides later jumps at a coach leaves them behind she's gonna go do her thing and they're like okay now we gotta figure out where the fuck she went so of course they all do their own thing they all have their own dangers they fight their own battles blah 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 and they end up meeting up again in the same place cool this is like a really good chunk into the book like getting close to the end and now don't do not think that this book goes by really fast this is a 760 page decent sized book i read the hardcover copy which is about two inches thick so we get to the final confrontation between the whole groups shit has gone down people are now walking around made entirely of glass great what the fuck so these people are basically just big walking glass books and cards. Um, being in their presence, they can make you see those visions just like looking into the cards or the book. Apparently, if you look into one of the books, it can kill you. Basically, final confrontation comes about everybody has their own hidden agenda. Wow, did not see this coming. Everyone has been so fucking full of themselves in this goddamn book. Like, how did you not know that this was going to happen? What I am most interested in is the fact that there are two novels preceding this one. I have already ordered the sequel, um, the Dark Volume, and I am very disappointed because the third volume, Chemical Marriage, is not available in the U.S. unless you are willing to spend over $50 for it on Amazon. How about no? So, overall opinion, it was a good read. The description was shit. It's Victorian, blah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Poet, Chang, Assassin, Dr. Svensson, Harshmort Manor. That's where everything happens, by the way. Harshmort Manor, remember it. Self-discovery, it, it doesn't say anything about the glass itself and the mysteries and the magic. It's a fantasy novel. But the description does not make it seem fantasy. The dialogue is good. Good dialogue. It's got good setup. Some of the characters do things that are extremely stupid. But still overall, I give it probably 7 out of 10. A soft 7 out of 10. Feel free to check out The Glass Books of the Dream Eaters by Gordon Dahlquist. Read it if you like it. If you don't, oh well, I don't give a shit. Or fuck off and watch another video. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, feel free to leave a comment on this video about something you'd like to see me review next, or on the discussion section of the page. Don't forget to check out my Facebook and Tumblr, you might find some shit on there you're interested in as well. Alright, later bitches.